Fair plus and get afternoon to the ministers and the altar, the mothers, to my family in Christ, and a special good afternoon to the youth. The topic today, the life of the chosen peculiar youth. The scripture lesson was read today. Titus 2, verses 11 to 14. And I will read it again in case you missed it. Yes. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us, from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. Now I remember when the sister came and she asked me to speak today and I started laughing. I didn't answer up to this day. I started laughing because I'm not much of a talker. But I told myself from the beginning of the year that I will make myself available for whatever it is the Lord will have me to do. And I'm listening to the first speaker this morning and I'm smiling to myself because I said, hmm, like she was there when I was going through my studies for this topic, boy. Hmm. She said some things that I have planned to say word for word and all. <laughs> That's good. So she gave some definitions. Basically the same definitions that I have, but I'm still going to say it again, and we're going to build on it, right? So, life. The state of being, existence. So, you have to ask yourself, how am I supposed to live? Some questions will come up later on or no. So let me just read that so for now. Chosen, having been selected as the best or most appropriate. Yes. Yes. From ever since I could remember, my mother telling me, you cannot do what you want. Yes. You cannot live how you feel to live. But you know, young people, we want to go out and do our own thing anyway. So I went out and I do my thing. And Jesus... Now, I can only talk for me, because I know what Jesus did for me, right? Jesus came for me in my darkness. He came for me. He went through that pit of hell again for me. Me. I don't know, you all will have your stories, you all will tell it whenever. But that's what he did for me. So, I believe I am chosen. Actually, I know I am chosen. Because I cannot do my own thing. I tried, trust me, I tried. I cannot. Peculiar. Different to what is normal or expected. Strange. Particular. Special. Now, the thing with society today, they want everybody to operate in the same way. And if it is you're not doing what somebody else is doing, they're watching you funny. They're watching you like... What she feels she playing. Right, we can leave that so for now. Youth. Period between childhood and adult age. A young person. And you know, long time when they're telling you, you must, you know, you must come to Christ and all these different things. And you find you're too young for this. Because you want to go out and experience the world a little bit. You're watching what your friends doing. And you want to do the same thing. But some of us cannot. So today's topic brings some questions to mind. What is my life supposed to look like? How am I supposed to live? What behaviors are acceptable and what behaviors are not? The answers to which are all found right here in this beautiful book that we love to ignore. This beautiful book, the Bible. You can find everything you need right there. So I decided to break it down into some points. 
as I said, I have a nice way to do it. So we will try that today. So the first point is, and these are steps in of how I believe you're supposed to live your life. If it is, you believe that you are one of the chosen, peculiar youth. So in order to live that life, you have to stay close to God. Amen. Point one. Amen. Close to the direct line where God can reach you, that is it. You could be unemployed and you're walking around with a biggest smile on your face. You don't know where your next meal coming from, but nobody don't know that is what you're going through because you're planted. Understand me now? It said, but her leaves shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought. What is drought to you? You don't know nothing about drought. You will not know nothing about drought. Even when drought is, you feel like you're unaffected. Because you have that trust in him. Amen. Right? And here the last part. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. <laughs> what am I telling you? What am I telling you? You will always, always. <laughs> I don't think I'm listening to me now. You will always be yielding fruit. Oh, yeah. I need to think about that. I need to think about that on a real. So, stay planted by the living stream because Jesus is the living stream. I came to Jesus and I drowned all like a living stream. What will happen to you? 
John 6 verse 44 says, No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. So, how many of us are being drawn to God today, but we are refusing to answer the call? How many? Just in case you didn't hear it again. You didn't hear it. How many of us are being drawn to God today, but are refusing to answer the call? You know you get up in the morning and you say go to church, but you decide, I want sleep in today? You know, you wake up at the end, it's like, hmm, you know, I should read my Bible, but you decide, now nah, I go and listen to music, and it's not gospel. How, how many of us? No, no, that's him knocking, no, you don't, you don't understand, you don't understand, that's what he's doing, that's him knocking. Answer the call, please. Hmm, time running out, you know. <laughs> I hope only no time running out. Okay, all right. And that brings me to my second point this afternoon. Develop a relationship with God. And when you develop this relationship, that means you're, you're taking time to learn God, you're taking time to understand Him, you're taking time to know Him. And there's only one way you can get to know somebody, and that's by spending quality time with Him. No, because many of us believe that we could come to church on a Sundays only, sit down in the church, not even paying attention, not clapping, not singing, or barely doing it, and they feel that is enough. Hmm. You cannot serve God on a Sundays only, or one day for the week, let me put it that way. This is a lifestyle something, in case you didn't realize. This is something you have to do every day. Whether you're in church, whether you're on work, wherever you may be. This is what you're supposed to be doing. Living for God. Right? So it's just like, it's just like any relationship, a friendship, you know, a boyfriend, girlfriend relationship, whatever it may be. You have to, you meet somebody, you want to get to know them better, you have to spend time with them. So you ask for the number, you start calling them, you start messaging and stuff, and you build something up. And the relationship becomes stronger and better, and some last, some don't last, you know it goes. <laughs> right? But you have to spend time, you have to put effort, you have to put energy, you have to put work. But people, they want to work for everything else except for Christ. They find they shouldn't have to suffer, but he did, right? Mm. Let me clear that up. Jesus suffered for us, right? The man sent his son down from heaven. Imagine you, you in royalty. Let's just say you're rich. Let me just think about this, right? You're rich, you're your fancy palace. And your father decided he going to send you to slum with the people who, the poor, the untouchables, as they call them in some countries. You know, you were sent to do that. How many of us can really go and do that? But this man Christ Jesus, he didn't say no. He went and he, he, said he dealt with everything that was thrown at him for our sake. For our sake. That is what he decided to do. But we find we shouldn't suffer. So you're home for like two months and you're so stressed out. Ugh. Your relationship fall apart and you're so like, Ugh. okay, maybe that wasn't the relationship for you. Think about that. Huh? I mean, come on, come on. We have to go through some stuff too. How else? How else could we relate to God and understand how he feels about us and understand what he went through for us? How else? Ask yourself that question. And Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 1 says, Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. Now some of you all must be wondering, why Christ will try to call me a young boy, like I don't know nothing. I mean, you ever watch a child, you ever study a child good, and watch how a child does learn? How a child is operating next to an adult? They imitate everything you do. Their minds are like that of sponges. They soak up everything. And that is how Christ wants us to be towards him. They are eager to learn everything. So they ask a set of questions that we find annoying at times because it is. But that is how Christ wants us to be. He wants us to be asking him stuff so he can know, speak to us. How would you know what Christ sounds like when he's speaking to you? How would you know this is Christ talking to me right now? A lot of you all think that you and Christ have a relationship, but Christ is on his throne like, I don't know this one. Mm -mm. I don't, mm -mm. who's she talking to? No, no, that prayer is not for me. I mean, you have to ask yourself. You have to ask yourself. So, you have to be living a certain way so that your children who 
imitate everything that you do, they will follow suit. Right? Jesus wants us to be free like a child heading home. Like you ever watch those children? They're coming home from school with their parents and the parents decide to go and lighten the load for the child. So they take the book bag and the lunch kit and the child is just skipping through the road like no worries. That is how Christ wants us to be for him. He wants us to trust him totally and completely. You understand what I'm saying? He wants us to say, hey, Jesus, you know what? I don't know about this situation, but I know you can handle this better than me. So, like, hold this. Yeah. That's what he wants us to do, you know, so we can walk through life serving him, doing what he wants us to do, and not focus on what it is we're going through while we're here on this earth. He wants us to place our burdens at his feet. Now, that is not an easy thing to do, eh? Because a lot of the times, you rest down, girl, because it's like easy to rest down, it's heavy. But then you pick it back up because you find Christ taking too long. I mean, who time are you working on here? Yours or his? When you find Christ taking too long, so you say, you know what? I have a solution for this. I want to deal with this. And then you put yourself in a bigger situation. You dig a, a deeper hole for yourself. And then, all of a sudden, you remember you have knees. So you're on the ground on your knees, crying and begging the Lord to get you out of this pit that you dug for yourself. And I'm talking from experience here. I ain't trying to call out nobody. I'm talking about myself. Because there's only me I know. That well. I'm talking about myself. And then they cry and they pray and they beg the Lord to deliver you from the sin you pick up. You open your own door. He didn't open it for you. Mm. All right. So, leave your burdens down by the riverside. Down by the river sign, down by the river sign, leave your burden. Down by the river sign, carry them no more. I say to carry them no more, carry them no And the six says that train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Hmm. This means give your child or your children a solid foundation. Hmm. Give them a solid foundation. So when the, the stress and the trials and the tribulation and the thing called life start to hit them, they know who to call on, they know where to return to. Because a lot of the times, you grow up in church and you go out there into the world and then you find yourself right back in church some years later. Some people take longer than others. I couldn't deal with the stress, so I find back myself fast. Mm. I said, mm-mm, mm-mm, we ain't doing it. So, you train up your child, and the thing is, if you don't do it, I think you're, you're just, you're cheating your child in a way, think about it. Now they have no idea who to call on when they're going through stuff. They have no idea what to do, who to turn to, and then they go to the wrong people and they end up serving the wrong person and you're wondering how my child turned out to. <laughs> ah, some of the parents, they curse their children. You don't know? Be careful of what you say. Life and death in the power of the tongue. We all know we say it a lot to know, but do we live it? You're saying things, you're calling things on your children and you don't realize you're doing it. And then when your children live up to exactly what you say that was going to be, you're wondering how this happened. You're blaming the child when it's you and your mouth. Hmm. Brings me to my third point. Emulate God. Adorn yourselves, yourselves yes, in his image or character. Hmm. How are we doing this, boy? I wonder. <laughs> Christ was a perfect man. Are we here on this earth? We trapped down here. How are we doing this? Hmm. How are we doing this? 
as I said before, you have to stay close to God. Yes. You cannot do this alone. A lot of the times we think we can do it alone, but we cannot. So, the lesson tells us how we are to live. And this is Titus, what I'm talking about here. And verse 12, it says, Live soberly, righteously, godly. And if that isn't enough, there's always Galatians 5, which talks about the fruit of the Spirit. And the first speaker was nice enough to list them out for you all. If you all were paying attention, you know, love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Yes, all of these. Right? And you see, the great thing about Galatians is, right? It tells you not only what to put on, but also what to keep off. Mm. So when you have time, or actually make time, just make time. And read Galatians 5. The whole of it. Yes. It will tell you the fruits of the flesh and the fruits of the spirit. And if that is not enough, because you need more, because we always need more. Right? Colossians 3 and 5 tells us, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil, concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. And we know what the Bible says about idolatry. And if all of these things is considered idolatry, then you need to ask yourself, what have you been doing all along? Come on. Right? So it comes down to spirit versus flesh. Uh. <laughs> it's a daily battle, eh? Don't feel like I can say one prayer and that is it. Spirit versus flesh. In case you don't understand. God versus Satan. Hmm. Heaven versus hell. Hmm. Titus 2 tells us, deny worldly loss and ungodliness. Hmm. Hmm. Think about it, good, right? Worldly loss. That's a heavy thing to do because every day you encounter in it. Every day, every day, you face your choices, options, what to do, go left, go right, how to, how to take this, what to do, right? But John 1, 1 John, sorry, 1 John, 1 Epistle of John, chapter 2 and verse 15 says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So, there's another part that tells us you cannot serve two masters because you would love one and hate the other. 